Hiya! Welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Channel, where we keep great radio from the past alive. Today, we're going to New York City and Imus in the morning. Imus was crotchety, Imus was cantankerous, but at times, Imus was really funny. Imus was a very interesting listen throughout the years. Imus in the morning started... Out in California, eventually worked its way to New York in 1971, and it ran for years and years and years, well, with a little bit of time off for good behavior back in 1977. But 1979, Imus came back to New York, did his thing, and eventually, even as the station changed from Top 40 to Sports, when it was sold, Imus stayed with the station. When WFAN let him go, he eventually worked his way over to WABC, and that's where he ended his career. And while he was there in the final several days of the show, he really opened up about himself, about his family, about the history of the show itself. And it was some fascinating and sometimes just tough listening, especially when we talk about things like his brother Fred dying and his split with Charles McCord and other things that happened through the years. So we're going to share another air check from Imus's final days on 77 WABC New York. For a big Imus fan who has uh, things to ask of you, says um, when you announced you were leaving a couple of weeks ago that Howard Stern was actually sad when he heard that you were leaving and even told Robin that morning he'd love to have you as a guest. Question is, could that ever happen, or is there too much, uh, too many years of ugliness prohibiting Imus ever going on with Howard Stern? Well, he had a much bigger problem with me than I ever have with him. And, um, you know, uh, I don't care. And I haven't said through all these years that I don't care and not mean it. I subscribe to the adage of uh, Winston Churchill, and I have from day one. Um, I'm not going to waste my time stopping and throwing a rock at every dog that barks. Because if I did that and do that, I wouldn't get to where I am now. <laughs> That's awesome. Beautifully said. That is awesome. Is that a yes? So, By the way, I'm just... <laughs> so what, <laughs> so what, you're Would I do it? I might. Wow. We're going to see what happens. If I did anywhere... Wow. So, so he's a pretty good interviewer. He's a great interviewer. So, well, I used to like he did. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny. Well, maybe I did think it was funny at the time. But I was really trying to stop drinking back in uh, 83, and I'd stopped doing cocaine. And we were working together at NBC. I would go on his show, you know. He's a funny bastard. And so, uh, and when I would go on, he would have a... Now, I had already said I stopped drinking, and I was lying at that time, by the way, because I drank secretly for four years, and I was going to AA meetings and speaking at meetings and so on. You can imagine where my self-esteem was. But anyway, publicly, I had said I had stopped drinking. Well, also, when I would go on his show, he'd have an open bottle of vodka there. (laughs) 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 I'm trying trying to get me to drink it, so... Well, but how did you stop, Bola? You said you, you said you lied about it. After rehab. It. Yeah, but you kept drinking after that, you said. No, not after rehab. No. Oh, after no. rehab, that no. was it. No, I went to, I started going to AA meetings. Michael Lynn took me to my first AA meeting back in wow. 19, well, 83. Uh, and for a while I stopped drinking, but then I started uh, secretly drinking. And I, I stopped doing cocaine on June 1st, 1983. But I drank until, secretly, until July 17th, 1987. When you say secretly, nobody else knew? Not even the guys on the show? Nobody? No, nobody knew. Wow. I'd go home, give me some vodka. Huh. And then I got so drunk one time, during July of 87, I was on a book tour for God's Other Son, New York Times bestseller, of course. And um, I got so drunk, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't recover. Wow. So I, 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 I had to go to rehab. I had no choice. Didn't uh, Jim, uh, what's his name, have to come? Jim Collins came and got me. Came down to the Iron Man's apartment. God bless him. He and Dale Parsons, they were great. I think Dale and Jim took me to rehab in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. I mean, in Palm Beach. I mean, alone in his apartment, and they rescued him. Wow. Yes, they did. And Brant, too. 
So, man, I was, uh, I was I'm wondering, I'm not, uh, I'm a real solid gold plated apple alcoholic. Um, anyway, what do you want, Sid? Well, Jack on Twitter asks me this. He says, um, hey, Sid, so ask. Is this another uh, Imus question? Yes, it is an Imus question, oh, and I think God. one that many people are asking. Right. What year did Imus start the ranch? And, uh, 1998. 1998. And uh, was there a life experience, outside the fact you're a good person, you love children, was there a life experience, something close to you that motivated you guys to do it? No, there was not. There was so not. What happened was um, uh, FAN, and I believe it was Joe Hollander and, uh, and David Juris, asked me if I would do a radiothon to raise money for the Tomorrow's Children's Fund. And I... I said nothing about it, so Dave Sims, uh, the sports guy, he and his wife took me over to meet David Juris, and the people at the Tomorrow's Children's Fund was, at that point, was just in a little room with five people on a checkerboard thing, and told me what they were trying to do, and I said, yeah, I'd be happy to. And that first radiothon, we raised a million dollars. I thought, God almighty. So uh, we did it for a year or two, I forget when that started. And then uh, I was getting ready, and it was at the apartment in New York, which I'm trying to sell, by the way, a beautiful penthouse apartment on Central Park West, and the office on the ground floor. Oh, my God. You can have this. Now, it's not cheap, but you know. And I was sitting up there, and uh, Deirdre was pregnant with Wyatt, and she was downstairs on a treadmill. And I was typing up an interview note for Paul Newman. And I got, I said, you know, we ought to do something like that. And so I, uh, I, I got, I said, well, why not? I don't know, it just came to me. The Imus Cattle Ranch and Kids with Cancer. Because I grew up on a ranch, the happiest time I'd ever been. Up to that point, was trying to be a cowboy on the ranch. And, you know, it's just, and what kid didn't want to be a cowboy? So uh, I went downstairs and told Deirdre, and she thought, she thought, she said, well, that's a great idea. And so together, we formulated what we were going to do. And uh, without her, by the way, I'm not patronizing her either, but there would be no ranch because I couldn't have done it. It would be ridiculous. And Fred was out in Santa Fe, and he helped us initially get it built. But then it was Dick Grasso, the guy from uh, the New York Stock Exchange. And I said, well, how am I going to raise money to do this? Ranch, he said, well, why don't you sell acres? Because I went to Santa Fe, by the way, and bought bought property and didn't know how I was going to develop it. But I put down a million dollars of my own money, and I didn't know whether I was going to get it back or what the hell was going to happen. Uh, and Grasso said, why don't you sell commemorative acres for 5,000 acres? I said, nobody's going to. What are you, nuts? But I went on the radio with it, and in four and a half hours, we made seven and a half million dollars. And then I sold uh, sponsorships to uh, all these sponsors, AT&T and American Express, and I nicked uh, Reader's Digest for a million dollars and named the town after them. We raised 40 or $50 million overnight. Jeez. Wow. Damn. And it was, and then we built one of the more magnificent facilities in the world, and uh, of course, unfortunately, it was 7,000 feet altitude, and then I got that horrible horse accident in 2000 and we did it for as long as we possibly could and then and now we're in the process of selling it but the uh, but the money all stays in the Imus Ranch Foundation and then we give that money to other organizations who do what the Imus Ranch did so it wasn't motivated by any specific situation that we had but just that I thought it was a good idea and so it did so Fred there we are